All right, morning friends. We are out here. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler, and today I brought out my four-wheel steer axial Capra. However, this one's a little bit special. This one has deluxe axles with a deluxe Nod 2 ultralight transmission. So it's got carbon fiber plates and exposed gears. Uh, it's an extremely compact and lightweight transmission. It's one of my favorites to use in a lot of custom builds available from Deluxe Fab. Deluxe, you know, got to give those guys a shout out. They help support me here on this project. They sent out some awesome axles as well. And they're a little bit wider than a standard capper axle is, but they offer some cool things like being able to clock the C's that your portal's attached to. I actually use their portal boxes, their overdrive gears, and uh, a few other things as well, like their Brig brass uh, portal covers on there as well. Previously, when you guys had seen this, this car had uh, carbon fiber wheels and it had what was called weight hangers in it. I have since uh, actually put those back on the original car that those came with and uh, had to sell those along with that car. Um, so this guy now has standard 2.2 wheels on it from Spec RC, and it's also got my West Desert Wheeler cut and shuts on it, and these are the Trepidors today. So let's go hit the rocks. We're going to talk more about this car and just why I love this thing so much. All right, guys, so I bought a GT5 controller three or four years ago, and my first one was awesome. I beat the crap out of it forever, and it just kept taking it. Eventually, I actually just wore out some springs in it to where, like, uh, you know, it just, it kind of just needed to be replaced. So, when it came time to replace it, I replaced it with a GT5. And I am not a fan of the new GT5. I'm trying to get you a better perspective of how off camber this is, but cars do roll off of here. And I'm actually not loving the line that I'm on. And so I've got to try not to fall off entirely, which it looks like I'm about to. Okay, there we go. And what I'm talking about with the GT5 is I'm losing, there's something wrong with this controller. Um, I'm losing like steering in it. My right rear is in the air, man. Calm down, car. All right, she settled out, we're good. So it used to be just like super fluid and smooth as you turn left to right. Now it's like like a seven position servo. Like it's got stages and it'll be really jumpy and it really kind of sucks because I can't drive as smooth as I want. So I am very disappointed with whatever modern GT5s are. Maybe I just need to try another new one and this one's got a fault, but I was not impressed once I uh, swatched, switched over to the new one, but hopefully that view gave you a little better perspective of just how off camber that is. This car is very wide, which helps with off camber. It's got a good amount of brass in the knuckles. And uh, yeah, just that's a tricky one right there. I ended up using my suck down winch for the front suspension. That is my own West Desert Wheeler Axial Capra winch mount on the nose of that car which currently I'm running low on inventory on those and I don't know that I plan to restock those. I used to have black and red and gray and they've just naturally sold out of those colors and now I'm just down to a few gray ones left. Apparently those were the not as popular choice, but that's fine. Uh, so I'm just down to the last few gray ones and I'm not sure that I'm going to replace it with more. Here we go into one of the just super fun, long cracks out here. That crazy side hill, we had to figure out that that was possible, basically just so we could go run this crack. That's, that's the only reason we do that. Just to kind of complete the line and make it all drivable. Oh, getting... See how jumpy my steering is? It makes me so mad. <laughs> Because in cracks, you really need finesse and not snappy steering movements like that. Because it doesn't take a whole lot of steering input to kind of correct to keep the car balanced as you go. Nice, those Trepidors have a fantastic sidewall on them for traction. So getting them in a crack like this, you get lots of traction loading them, loading them up, driving on the shoulders of the tire.
smooth run as always. So any of you familiar with my mousetrap trail know that right here, we got to bump up this little ledge and we side hill around. Why don't we try a different approach today and see if the old buggy can't make something new happen. I don't know that it's even entirely new. I think I've done this before, but uh, we're going to see if we can make it happen for this video. Do a little sideways drop. Ooh, front end needs to hook up. There she goes. Now anybody wondering what shocks I'm using? These are the Traxxas shocks and they're the long ones. 108, 106 mil, something like that. Just to try and get this thing to articulate quite a lot with these wide axles. It's not a crazy flex machine. It's got a good amount though. It's a little deceptive because I run big tires, so having a full tire's worth of flex on this car, well, it's more than most of my other cars, right? Oh, come on. So this car has a Holmes Hobbies revolver motor, which is a 1950 KV. It's their Holmes Hobby classic revolver. So it's the great big guy that makes a ton of torque. I just wanted a super torquey system for this. The Deluxe Nod 2 transmission is similar looking to the Deluxe Portal transmission. And this car has portal axles, but the Nod 2 creates more gearing. Like it's a lower gear reduction transmission or higher gear reduction, makes the car slower. Because this, uh, this transmission is geared for straight axles, but if you pair those with portals, then you get a ton of gear reduction. So when I get it all jammed up into bad situations, it has a ton more torque to be able to fight against that. So on top of being geared like crazy, it's got a huge torquey motor, which is just a fun combination. So here we go, we're gonna see if... Man, I would love it if my steering actually did the things I told it to, that'd be really cool. I'm gonna be getting rid of this controller very soon and uh, I'll probably try a GT5 one more time. I just love the rear steer control on it. And this controller is not old and I have not abused it. So I don't know what the deal is. But like there's situations where when I get all off camber like that, I can't have my front steering like that being all snappy and weird. It can upset the car and make me fall off of stuff. Lovely, very lovely. Nice little bonus line on the way into Mousetrap. There used to be a rock up on top of here on the left side. Looks like it has since fallen off. And it used to make this line extremely difficult. But I think we're gonna be able to kind of wiggle our way through here fairly quickly. I probably need to see up top, see what's going on. Okay, let's run around front. I think we got some good portal action going. Well, it looks like our front tire is gonna get trapped in this overhang, so I actually do need to just turn and get up on top of this rock, which may or may not be easy or difficult. Because I think I'm catching the back edge of that tire. There it is. Make sure you keep the rear up. I'd like to try and Swing it around the corner, but I can't get that rear trapped down in there or else it'll never pull its way off of there. There we go. Suspension's all drooped out. Nice. Once you're up on your belly like that, especially angled forward, a little bit of wiggle in your front servo with the weight in the front really makes it kind of get off the belly and slide forward. Fun little buggy bonus line there on Mousetrap. There's always new lines. A 
Nice, barely held onto that balance there. This car is running two Reefs Smart 1100 servos. So just all the steering torque we can get out of this thing. And I've definitely got a BEC in here as well. So that I can run those servos. It's got a Holmes Hobby V3 ESC with that revolver motor. So just nice, slow and controlled with all the gear reduction. I'm running a 12 tooth pinion on this as well. Currently it has 3S in it, but I do run it on 4S as well. I just didn't have my 4S pack with me this morning, so no big deal. It still runs really great on 3 as well. We're going to see how long we can stick out this side hill here. Once those rears get up, it's going to get real sideways. See if we can keep it controlled around. Nice, it's sticking really good actually. The rears are falling down. Woo, nice little save. The rears are sticking down because of the overdrive from the front portal gears. Those are available from Deluxe as well. I believe it's 30-ish percent range, a little over 30 I think. 33 maybe. There is a ton of mouse poop in the bottom of this canyon right now, and that is where this trail got its name, Mouse Trap. Also, the full-size trails in this area are named after board games, so I named it after a board game as well. I have other trails here for RCs that I've named after board games. I just thought it was kind of funny to do that. Also, like... Wheeling trails get end up with the weirdest names ever anyway, so like you could name them whatever you want. So being able limiting limiting my options to board games actually kind of helps me just pick one. Like you could name a real rock crawling trail Potato Wedge. Like it doesn't matter. It's just all sorts of goofy names out there. Typically something some kind of bad experience happens on a trail early on and then that's how people start referring to it. And uh, that's where they get their names. So like, there's a trail in Sand Hollow called Slip Lock, and that was by Milt Thompson and I think Jeremy. And they went out and they were wheeling and uh, Jeremy's locker kept slipping. That's where Slip Lock came from. And I'm pretty sure it's a good reliable source because it was Milt Thompson who told me that. So it's the same Milt of Milt's Mile in Sand Hollow. I was fortunate enough to be able to go out and crawl with Milt back in like 2007 or 8. And uh, yeah, we ran West Rim and stuff. It was fun. That was a long time ago. I was riding a four-wheeler back then. I didn't know a damn thing about buggies. All right, so this car being on 3S right now and not 4, um, as well as I just changed a pinion to a smaller pinion to a 12. So we lost some wheel speed doing that. 4S will make your car faster as well. Um, this hill is all about horsepower, so I don't know if I just simply have enough wheel speed to do it, but we're gonna try anyway. Okay, I think we can do it. If my steering would do steering things, damn fly sky. And I know it's the fly sky because all of a sudden multiples of my cars are doing this. If you're checking out the paint job on these panels on this Capra, definitely get on Instagram and follow my buddy Jason at Bonehead RC. He painted these up for me and these things are super rad. Love the way the pearl and the purple pops off those bright silver deluxe axles. Floating our front tire there. Settle down. There we go. Let's go up and around the next rock, too. There we go. Getting some off camber action. And you got to turn your rears up. Oh, yeah, she wants it. Piece of cake. Love it. That's the kind of goofy little things I love doing when I'm driving around. 
So as of the time I released this, I've uh, been a little slow on videos lately. I apologize. It's just been crazy hot down here. And when I wake up early to go out to Sand Hollow, I'm usually bringing my full-size buggy because uh, it just sounds a little, a little more fun right now. Got the new car. I'm very excited about it. And uh, yeah. But we're still absolutely going to keep trucking on the RC content. I do still absolutely love the RCs as well. Woo! Rears did not like getting dragged through that, I can tell you that. Start making those 1100s work hard. This obstacle has never been friendly to wide cars, and this certainly is a wide car. They just bind you up a lot more. But I think we found a pretty decent line today, just was able to push through it thanks to all that torque and gear reduction. And the old trepidors on their sidewalls work really well. I don't love the trepidors on flat surfaces, even now that they're scrubbed in pretty decent. But uh, the sidewall has always been excellent on there. And with our 13 and a half, 13 and three quarter wheelbase, we should be able to make this drop down no problem. I ordered custom links off of Vanquish Products website. But uh, if you want custom high clearance links, you can always ask Deluxe Fab about that as well. This whole car was just a Frankenstein project that I had to figure out for myself. Should we go run more, one more? Let's go run one more. As kind of has become tradition, we've been running the exit on the Cold Cuts Trail after Mousetrap now. The exit of Mousetrap kind of leads you straight towards this area. And it's very challenging and fun, so just, it's always fun to see what the cars will do. Some days they like it, some days they don't. But you always gotta earn it, so. I, d I don't remember driving this Capra through here, and I don't remember if I did or not. It'll be interesting on the Trepidors. Whoa, it almost looked like it wanted to crawl that. Which I've never crawled it. Maybe a little more crazy on the angle and then snap into it. Yeah, I think we're just gonna have to bump up it like everyone else. That's all right. Man, rear steer makes the reset so much easier. I've driven a ton of class two trucks up here and it's like a full reverse and it's an operation to get it to do what you want. Okay, we're gonna, I would like to get that front left up on top of this rock up here because we got the reach and I think we got it. So there we go. That's going to get our belly to clear through the V-notch. Normally most rigs end up over to the right side and just bellied out as hard as possible. So doing this really is just a cheat code. We can get the belly through, then that obstacle is not so hard. That was sweet. I mean, and I've been doing VRD carbons and Axial Pros and all that running these lines and that was a it's a real fight for all those it shows just the crazy level that this car is on and just the benefits of rear steer now some people be like oh it's cheating well rear steer exists man it's fun this is a buggy this is a scale thing to do truthfully that's not the line i want i was kind of going to go along with it and uh, didn't work out I almost entirely forgot I put a motor and ESC fan in this car. It's located just under the dash. It blows across the motor and onto the ESC, which is mounted on the passenger door panel, the door bar in there. That should help it run a little bit cooler out here. It is very hot already, and it's only like 8.30 in the morning. Yeah, our wheelbase is putting us into dual ledge here, and that's, that's not helping us right now. We may need to find a different line for this car. Okay, 
Let's just see if we can bump up there. There we go. A little momentum goes a long way. Get that front to really bite on there, pull the rest of the car up. It's crazy how just sometimes one tire can move the whole car in the direction you need. And get that front bite up there, get the rear around. And there we go, through the mouse trap, out the exit of cold cuts pretty quickly. This Capra is a beast, man. And it's amazing how lightweight this car is because of those deluxe axles. It's one of my biggest footprint cars, and this thing only weighs six pounds. It's pretty incredible. Well, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. My name is Logan at West Desert Wheeler. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. If you guys are after a set of cut and shuts, that's kind of where I post up when they will be available. So if you're after those, that's kind of how you can get them. Uh, I've got some trepidors on this car. I also make crawlers and swampers. So a cut and shut is a standard 1.9 tire. I cut up the sidewall across the tread and down, and then I take a piece of a donor tire, like a little pizza slice, and then I spread that original tire open bigger. I glue that in there, and then it makes it a 2.2 wheel that you can mount it to, and then it's a taller tire as well, but it keeps the factory 1.9 width. So if you guys are wondering what a cut and shut is, that's what it is. I think it's a great height for things like Capra's and H10 Optics. That's what I prefer to do with them. You can always put them on whatever you want, but uh, that's typically where I put mine. So thank you guys very much for watching. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. We will see you in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.